Hey guys, Mario here coming at you with a full workout video. This time we're gonna be doing a lower body day. I'm gonna be doing some heavy squats. I'm gonna go fairly low in repetitions. I also included the warm up routine. I've included all the other accessory work that I've been doing this day, like Romanian deadlifts, some Mayo reps, some cool stuff that you're gonna be seeing me doing here. Which is uh, one thing a lot of guys ask me, I mean, what is the difference between my routine? What am I focusing on right now? How does my routine change over time? And it's quite interesting and that's something I wanted to talk a little bit in this video. I did add a little bit of speed for the warm up routine here and just to cut the video a little bit shorter because uh, that's uh, just, I mean, it's just a little bit of extra speed. So it makes it more digestible, I think. So while you watch me um, warm up here, I'd say warm up is really, really important. So I felt beat up specifically on this day because I had a, a very hard upper body day just before this. And uh, the upper body day left me sore because I added some extra volume for the back. And then when you work your back and you get a little bit of soreness and just some tightness. And I mean, I wasn't fully recovered in terms of the back. I still went into a heavy lower body day. I mean, from my experience in the past, I've actually uh, performed better sometimes when I have a little bit of soreness. So it just really, you never know. Like you never really know what your body is gonna give you. I'm quite happy with how this day went. You're gonna see me kind of break in when I do very heavy squats, heavy in relation to my current strength levels. And um, I'm still happy. I pulled out some decent numbers today. As I said, I rarely go uh, this slow in repetitions maybe just a few months in a year, I really go this slow and I'll tell you guys why. I'll tell you a little bit of uh, about that connection between strength levels and, and building muscle. And my goal, mo most of guys are asking me, okay, so I follow all these powerlifters on, on YouTube. My goal is aesthetics, right? My goal is uh, physique based, right? It's more leaning toward bodybuilding rather than powerlifting. Although I do take concepts from powerlifting such as like maximum focus on the form, like having some specificity, working some low repetitions, having really good programming. I mean, you can learn a ton from people who are really good in powerlifting. I mean, it's, it's a very complementary kind of uh, thing toward aesthetics, but I'm spending two thirds of my time really focusing on hypertrophy and high repetition ranges and about one third of my time in those low repetitions. Uh, which you see here in this video that I'm gonna be doing a little bit for squats. And in general, I mean, when we talk a little bit about what is strength, like what is the kind of relationship that we have between uh, strength and muscle growth? And when it comes to strength, it's really about three things, right? It's about skill. So you're building a skill with a certain lift. That's something that you acquire a skill to move a weight in a specific movement and a specific rep range. So you get used to doing that, um, that specific movement. So there's rule of specificity, right? And that skill gets better and better over time. That's something we all focus on. You'll see, I mean, various numbers thrown out there. I heard the number of like 10,000 repetitions, you know, it takes to master like a squat or a deadlift. I think there's, no upper limit. I, I honestly think that there's no upper limit and there's no limit how good can someone get in terms of like their skill set. I mean, you see guys um, have YouTube channels, they've been lifting since they were like two years old and now they're like in their 20s and they're doing some crazy numbers for squats. I mean, it, it all comes down to the same as other professions. If you see like professional violinists, world elite, uh, pianist and all the, I mean, it takes about like eight to 10 years, I'd say like really hardcore practice to master something. For some, I mean, it comes a little bit faster, some slow, depending how much you focus on it, how much you get that perfect practice in that sweet spot where you're a little bit outside of the comfort zone. And that's a whole different topic. But going back into the kind of strength versus hypertrophy, what are the differences? That's something what I wanted to discuss a little bit here while you guys watch me lift is that, as I said, strength comes down to three things. Uh, first one is skill. Second one is neurological adaptations. And the last one, very, very important one, often overlooked is muscle size. And it's not really, in, in, compared to hypertrophy, where for hypertrophy, for muscle growth, the key is the total wor work you perform, right? The volume is the key. And it's really less specific to what intensity you perform 
this volume in. I mean, there's obviously practical kind of reasons why you wouldn't want to do volume work for like the weight that you would normally do for three repetitions because you would need to spend hours and hours in the gym because recovery periods would be so long and you would be super beat up and it would be really hard to sustain that kind of volume uh, on your like connective tissue in your joints but in a sense it's always good to train in all repetition ranges i mean if you follow all the research out there it points out the very simple thing you need to train all of your repetition ranges in order to maximize hypertrophy but it is not very specific toward a specific movement or repetition range so you can have a variety of movements hit the muscle group from various angles and it all accumulates in volume for that muscle group and that's what makes it grow coming back at strength you're actually training a movement right you're only strong at the movement you're training obviously there's some carryover between uh, let's say squats and if you want to do if you're very strong at squats you're probably going to be strong at like any kind of a knee extension exercise but i mean you're specifically training for a squat to be strong in a squat because it takes all these uh, muscles to, co to coordinate and I mean it's just a it's just a very complex skill set that you need to work on and it the and volume is a factor simply because it allows you for the amount of practice you need to get good at squats right but one important factor that I said I mean neurological adaptations obviously to lift heavy you want to you want to lift heavy you know like simple as that you want to be lifting heavy if you want to lift heavy uh, in a sense for uh, the muscle size, that's a factor a lot of people would think, you know, they're asking like, okay, why am I not getting stronger? Well, it's because you're not building any muscle, you know, there's just a limit how much you can actually get out of your current muscle mass. And it is complementary for, for the sake of like just getting size to work on some hypertrophy work eventually. And all the powerlifters also do hypertrophy work every once in a while just to simply get that growth. They do a lot of assistance work. They do some form of work. So here, I'm actually gonna pause my kind of theory uh, talk here and just go into the uh, first set of squats, which depleted me a lot. And for this specific day, I went into uh, the set of three with 140, which is quite heavy for me, especially for this day where I felt I was uh, gonna get crushed by this weight. Even as I was warming up, I was like, shit, I need to do this. I kind of try to narrow my stance a little bit, uh, work on depth here. So. I think I went uh, deep enough, you know, and felt really heavy in the first set. I kind of lost tightness there, and I'm gonna try to re-tighten up a little bit. Second rep was still okay. Third rep, I was, uh, in, in my kind of viewpoint, went super slow, and I kind of decided to re-tighten up a little bit, get more, uh, and then I pulled it up still. I pushed my hips forward, and it worked. Pretty happy with the way this went. I think with the uh, with the squats, I mean, it's my weakest lift, as I was always saying, like squats are really a pain in the ass for me, but I'm doing high bar, I'm doing really deep. I don't wanna sacrifice any like range of motion or anything like that. I started incorporating actually Anderson squats. I'm not sure if you guys know what Anderson squats are. You can do them on a power rack. Essentially, you are just doing one portion of the movement. It comes back from like, like famous uh, strongman, uh, Anderson, who was, uh, he would like dig a, dig a hole in the ground and he would do uh, he would do like squats with barrels or people or whatever from the hole. So he would just do a partial range of motion. Then eventually he would just put in more uh, ground and more stuff into the hole. So he would have to go like from the deeper and deeper position. And eventually he would be able to do a full squat. So that's kind of like the gist of it. It's a very interesting thing that I've decided to add to my training. And here I also um, did one more set. This is again with 130. I mean, it felt okay, you know, I mean, I, I was really drained by the 140 kilo set. So any set afterwards, I was just com dying completely. And I just decided to, okay, I did two extra sets with three reps and I said, okay, let me knock out one more set uh, with 120 just to get some extra volume. As I said, volume for me is a priority because of my goal is muscle growth, even though I'm lifting heavy and this is kind of that reverse pyramid system where I'm going for the heaviest set while I'm the fresh, while I'm most fresh and then I get that out of the way and then I can kind of focus on my work uh, to get in that extra volume and that's the, the key and I mean looking at all the studies I mean I'm gonna go back to kind of my theory there's there's really a, a nice relationship between 
getting stronger and also building muscle at the same time, which is which is really good. I think a lot of uh, guys they they they're kind of focused on hey, I just wanna I just wanna get size. You know, I don't give a fuck about strength. Well, look, I mean, you will have you will get stronger, but you eventually will have to get stronger. So you have to train for both. You have to vary your repetition ranges, and there there's a point as well in a lot of people's training where they start getting those diminishing returns because they don't manage their fatigue as well so that's one of the areas that i would want to touch a little bit in this uh, kind of theory talk here while you watch me lift is that people don't take deloads people are just so focused they're either in that range of like i'm killing myself in the gym i'm training super fucking hard beast mode every day for months and months like going to failure and there are other people who are on the other side of the spectrum. So these guys are not training hard, they're just taking fucking selfies and doing Instagram and Snapchat in the gym. Well, I don't see a lot of guys who are just training hard and smart at the same time. And it doesn't take that much of like an IQ to do this. You just simply need to add a bunch of deloads eventually, you know, you need to feel your body and if you're not progressing maybe it's the fact that you're overtraining or undertraining you know maybe you're not doing enough for most people i think that they're just training too hard like the guys that i see in the gym who are very consistent and they are kind of training really hard but at the same time they don't take deloads and their diets are kind of in that gray zone so they're not optimized toward gaining muscle so they're not in a caloric surplus but they're also not optimized toward losing fat. So they're kind of in that gray zone. So they're training hard, no deloads, and they're also in the gray zone. And that's why you'll get guys looking the same every single fucking year. It's because they don't do any uh, like phases between like cutting and bulking, when focused on muscle growth. And growing muscle is quite hard, you know, it's not easy. So you definitely need, especially as you train with, with age, you definitely need um, all the help you can get and trying to do that in a caloric deficit or just even a small main it's kind of maintenance thing is just not gonna cut it you know it's just, it's just a limit how much you can do that and here I actually threw in some uh, dumbbell split squats um, instead of the regular lunges I always have some single leg work I mean people ask me, like okay so you hate lunges what do you do well sometimes I do split squats and um, they're a little bit annoying in this gym because my shoes slide so I often need to reposition myself. They're a little bit annoying, but I like to mix it up eventually. You know, I just keep in a movement for like uh, four to five weeks and then I'm gonna switch to a new movement. So I'm gonna keep the variety in there because the body gets used to the, the same thing if you overdo it. But if you switch too often, as I see, it's like a lot of guys making the mistake is they have too much exercise variety too frequently. So your body, uh, look at the learning curve, right? So if you, if you put in a completely new movement every week or two, your body doesn't have time to learn the movement to get the maximum value out of the movement, to get the maximum growth out of it. So be aware of like how often you switch. Like a good rule of thumb is every fifth, every sixth week, maybe exchange some movements. And uh, again, I mean, it's, it's also a personal preference depending how you like the movement, which movements you need to add. I mean, there's a lot of key factors here, but talking like especially in the context of exercise variety, too much, too frequently can be a problem, too little, too infrequently can also be a problem. So find a sweet spot, find something that still make your training enjoyable. I will often, instead of uh, really removing the whole fucking exercise, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do small variations. I call them like set modifiers and things like that. So I'm gonna do like modify my grip with and things like that just to keep it uh, a little bit more interesting so here you see me doing some uh, uh, smith machine hip thrusts with uh, some heavy load and i also placed my uh, legs on my feet on that uh, reebok step one one uh, level just to make sure that i get some extra range of motion there uh, these are pretty good i like this movement i mean it always works my glutes pretty well and um, i just decided to add this i think this is a this is a part of every single workout I do for lower body. I mean, I always uh, make sure to include some form of hip thrust work for my glutes because I sit down a lot. I definitely need need this type of work. My glutes, uh, I, I notice like the more I improve the hip thrust, the stronger I get on the squat and on the deadlift. So this is kind of the exercise that, that I wanna keep there. 
because I know it's, it's contributing. And there are exercises like that, that you know that they're contributing toward your main lifts, even though like uh, people would <laughs> sometimes avoid this exercise because it's a quote unquote, like making them embarrassed or whatever, you know? I mean, this type of movement, you won't see a lot of guys doing and that should fucking tell you that it's a good movement because <laughs> only the only really people who are educated and, and they follow the research are uh, investing time in hip thrust. And here I decided to throw in some assistance extra work with um, some myo reps for leg extensions. Uh, I was a little bit of time pressed. I mean, the workout kept dragging on and I just decided to finish off with some myo reps. And um, for you guys who haven't watched my myo rep a tutorial for biceps and triceps, essentially you take the set to failure or close to failure. And then um, you take just a small rest pause and then you hit another five reps and those are kind of your effective reps. Those are your effective sets. So you have an activation set, which is 25, 30 reps. In my case, I'm gonna go to 30 here. That's kind of activating all my muscle fibers. And then once I hit that failure or burn, or just can't do any more reps, I'm gonna leave the weight. I'm gonna breathe like three, four times. I'm just gonna catch my breath and I'm gonna do like three to five reps, get some, uh, gets really that blood going in there and adds a lot of volume very fast. Uh, pretty nice work, gets you sore as fuck if you're not used to it. So be careful with inter like integrating this into your training, not to overdo it or not to add too many of my rep exercises. I specifically use it only for the movements that are uh, machine work or isolation movements because I don't want to like completely destroy my uh, system here. So so that's uh, that's one tip there. Uh, definitely add it if you never tried it. It's gonna add some extra night juice to your workout. Other stuff uh, in the workout that I've been doing here, you're gonna see me uh, do some um, glute bridges, single leg. Uh, they actually threw out uh, the leg curl machine from the gym. I think they're fixing it or something, so I don't have a lot of uh, hamstring movements. So I decided to do some extra hamstring work with this. So even though I'm working the glutes, I'm also working the hamstring here because I'm kind of pushing away, I'm mentally focusing on activating my hamstring and it is working, it is helping, adding some extra volume there. I mean, I know it's not ideal, I could probably like figure out another movement, maybe do something on the cable curl uh, machine or something like that, maybe on the pulley, but it's fine, you know, it does the job and you add some extra volume there, uh, it, it's, it's pretty good. And it, it is definitely, I mean, you wanna be innovative when you miss these kind of, uh, piece of equipment in the gym often I mean guys will complain they're gonna find an excuse hey I can't fucking do it well look you can always do it there's there's different movements that you can do you can do like the uh, on the incline bench you can just put a dumbbell between your legs and curl it up there's various ways you can curl you can create some kind of uh, uh, curl with like a glute kind of uh, work on, on the hyper extension you know you can get some hamstring work there there's many different ways to activate your hamstrings and I'm sure you will be able to Google some if you really want to, but I often see like the lack of knowledge, quote unquote, used as an excuse not to get shit done. And, and that's often like guys ask me, hey man, like w would you do this exercise on this day? And I, and I ask them, hey, what, what if I asked you the same thing, what would you tell, like, what would you tell me? And then they, they tell give me the exact same answer I would give them. You know, people just know like intuitively uh, what they need to do a lot of the times. I'm not saying always, but a lot of the times they just know, but they're kind of using that excuse, like that lack of knowledge, you know, it's, oh, I don't know what to do, so <laughs> I can just slack out. And um, as I said, my, my current goals are, as always, like build muscle. Currently in my diet, the way it's set up, I'm actually on a, on a, on a cut. So like for the next seven weeks, I'm gonna be cutting down. And uh, then I'm planning to go on a very, very, very long lean bulk phase. So I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna be bulking until the end of the year. So from starting April, uh, I'm thinking of holding that uh, even throughout the summer. I know it's like the summer and you wanna be uh, lean and abs and beach and, and all that stuff. But I think I can pull through the summer with like a nice lean gaining phase uh, and that's kind of my plan right now because I really need to focus on building muscle. Uh, I think that I haven't been focusing on enough. I've been always kind of like, yeah, I want to be lean. It looks good on social media. It looks good on everywhere. But I mean, I, I think that the, the worst thing a person can do is be in the gray zone. 
And the gray zone is, is go a little bit of build muscle, cut it down, cut down the fat. And you just like exchange these mini phases, but you don't notice that much of a difference year to year. Obviously you're getting stronger, uh, you're building some muscle, but you can just get so much better results if you just simply commit to one thing and then work on that and really ex work on that through an extended period of time at least 16 to 24 weeks of like a nice lean bulk phase. I think mine definitely gonna be like at least six months and uh, that's gonna be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to having enough calories to play around a little bit with food. That's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, give me a lot of room uh, to actually try out different stuff. I'm gonna be traveling a little bit more. And, and I kind of lean bulking is easier to manage for me than being on a cut simply because on a cut I do want to do it properly so I, so I really keep track of everything. On a lean bulking phase I am moving more into like kind of a habitual diet where I just keep an eye on protein and calories and the weight scale to make sure that I don't gain too much weight at once and I'm excited to really try to do that uh, once again. Uh, last time I did it this time in 2015 about uh, December, January, and February when I was living in Asia in Taiwan was pretty good. I felt awesome at like being I was 85 kilos. That's uh, 10 kilos more than I have now, which is crazy. And I'm looking forward to getting really uh, some of that mass uh, back on and that is gonna elevate my strength levels because my goal is by the end of the year to hit uh, at least eight reps for that 140 kg in a squad. I mean, that's the goal. Uh, hopefully you can hit that eight comfortable reps. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment below. What do you think? And if you enjoyed the video as well, you click subscribe below, support the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.